Welcome back to Coding Commanders. I'm Commander Candy and today we are going to make a vanilla JavaScript random number generator. Now the complete project uses vanilla JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, but this video is going to focus on the JavaScript. I'm only going over the HTML that's going to connect with our JavaScript, but no worries. All of the project code is on my website at codingcommanders.com slash randomjs. I also have tons and tons of super useful tutorials on HTML and CSS that I will link in the video description. So in our application, the user gets to determine the minimum and maximum value for our pseudo random number. Why do I say pseudo random number? Pseudo means false or a sham. It's pretending to be random. What's random? Made, done, happening, or chosen without method or conscious decision. It's just random. There's no method to the madness. The way JavaScript simulates generating a random number is it starts with a seed. The seed is a value that's determined by the current timestamp. That seed is put through an algorithm. The algorithm does its thing and then it spits out a pseudo random number. But JavaScript itself isn't the one responsible for the algorithm. Each web browser is able to choose whatever random simulating algorithm they wish. That means it's up to the web browser to adapt to whatever the latest and greatest method is. They don't have to wait for JavaScript to update. It also means that different web browsers will use different algorithms making the pseudo random number even less predictable. Let's go over the three JavaScript predefined functions that we're going to use in order to generate our pseudo random number. We will use math random, which is the pseudo random number generator. We will also use math floor and math seal, which are JavaScript rounding functions. Math random is going to generate a pseudo random number between zero and one. It's always going to be less than one, but it could potentially equal zero. If we declare a variable called myRand and set it equal to math random, then myRand is going to be a number that's greater than or equal to zero, but less than one. Math floor is going to round a number down to the nearest integer. So 3.2 rounded down would be 3, and 3.8 rounded down would also be 3. Math seal is going to round a number up to the nearest integer. So 3.2 rounded up would be 4, 3.8 rounded up would also be 4. Now we're going to make a function that takes in a minimum and a maximum value for our random number range and then it's going to spit out a random integer within the given range. We're going to create a function called randnum which takes in min and max as its parameters. We are going to set min equal to the value min that was taken in rounded up to the nearest integer and then we are going to set max equal to the value max that was taken in rounded down to the nearest integer. So now we got our two integers and what we're going to do is we are going to generate a pseudo random number between 0 and 1 using math random and then we're going to multiply it by the quantity of our maximum value minus our minimum value plus 1. Once we have that quantity we are going to round it down to the nearest integer and then we will add the value of min to that quantity. To see how this works, let's use an example. Let's say our min value is 1 and our max value is 10. And I'm just going to use JavaScript to randomly generate a number and then I'm just going to round it to three decimal places to keep this a little bit simple. Okay, so rand is going to equal 0.372. So we're going to math floor the quantity of 0.372 times the quantity of 10 minus 1 plus 1. And then all that we're going to add 1 to. 
So if you remember back to math class, we're going to do what's in the parentheses first. 10 minus 1 plus 1 equals 10. 0.372 times 10 is going to equal 3.72. We're going to round 3.72 down to the nearest integer, which is 3, and then add 1, which is 4. Okay, before we start our next function, we're going to have to look at our HTML form because what the next function is going to do, it's going to let the user input the minimum and maximum values to enter into that random integer generating function that we just wrote. When the user pushes the button, it's going to plug those values into our function and then display a random integer within that range. So here we see, I will generate a random integer between, we got a couple spaces, then we have an input, the type is number because we want the user to enter a number, the name of the ID is min value. This is how we're going to identify this data. We're gonna reference it by ID min value, and the placeholder is min value. And we have, the max value input. Type again is number and the ID is max value. That's how we'll identify this value. Then we have a button. The ID for the button is my butt. On click, we are going to run the function generate, which we're about to write. On mouse down, we're gonna play a sound. That little chime that you hear when I press the generate button that is through a little function on the top which will also go over when we're done with the random number generation. Then down here we have a div and the ID is output so when we take that random integer we generated we're going to stick it in the element with the ID output. Now we are going to start our generate function. Function generate is a function without parameters because we are going to go fetch the parameters for a random num function from the user input. So we're going to let min equal document dot get element by ID and the ID is going to be min value to access the value that the user put in that element we're going to do dot value then we're going to let max equal document dot get element by ID. And this one is going to be the element with the ID max value dot value. Now let's let rand equal the return value of random with min and max passed in. Now we're going to take that brand value and display it to the user by using human dot get element by ID. The ID that we want here is output because that is our div to display the output dot inner HTML. That's how we write something inside of that element. And what we're going to write is the value rand. We want our application to be listening for when the user pushes that button to go ahead and execute our generate function. Document dot get element by ID and the ID is going to be my butt dot add event listener on click we're gonna run the code generate boom now let's take a look this is what the page will look like when it's complete this code is available on my website at codingcommanders.com slash randomjs now i promised i would show you how to add that sound on that codingcommanders.com slash randomjs you can download this sound if you'd like called chime and this is the little script that plays the sound. Var sound is going to equal a new audio element 
and the SRC, this is going to be the location of the file. I have it located in the same folder as the index.html and it's called chime.mp3. That's it. That's all. <laughs> Thank you for watching my video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment below. Also comment and let me know if you'd like me to do a video where I go through the whole application process, the HTML, the CSS, as well as the JavaScript. If enough people comment and say they want me to do that, I will make that video. Thank you again for watching and until next time, happy coding.